Let's make some chain mail in Fusion 360, but not just any little chain mail. We're talking parameter driven chain mail. Let's take a look at what I mean here. We've got some chain mail, no big deal. You can do that in any CAD program. But can you do this? Change the size of the wire. Oh, changes. What about making more of the links? Let's go six one way, nine the other way, and yeah, let's just see, let's see what happens here. Oh, yeah. That would have taken a long time in any other CAD program. So, how are we going to do this? Well, let's take a look at what we need to draw. Uh, let's roll back the timeline to where we just have one link. Take a look at it. What do we need here? Well, we're going to need two crossbars going that way, two crossbars going this way, and four vertical posts. Okay, that's pretty simple. We're going to need to figure out how to space them apart for the pattern and how to interlink them. So we're going to have to create parameters for each of those so that anything we want to change, we're going to have to make into a parameter. Let's go over here and start a new sketch. I've already started a new sketch and drawing. First thing, let's draw some rectangles. And let's make the posts first. Let's make them 5 by 5 millimeter squares. And let's also draw some rectangles. Now, we could go ahead and start extruding them up, sure. Let's go ahead and create some parameters first. We kind of know what we're going to need. So, under the Modify menu, down at the bottom, Change Parameters, up pops this spread look sheet looking thing. Um, under User Parameters, Add New Parameter, Green Plus Arrow. Let's start with uh, the, the posts, the wires, the basic wires. Let's go Wire Width. And stick with millimeters. Let's make that five millimeters. Let's add another wire depth. Now, here we're going to do something different. Wire width times one. That means that wire depth is going to take the value that's in wire width, multiply it by one, uh, so it knows it's a formula, uh, and it's going to take the value that we've already put into wire width and use it here. So that means that whenever I change wire width, wire depth is also going to change. Let's also do that since we're working in three dimensions here. Let's go wire height and do the same thing. Wire, wire width. Let's just choose it from the pop down here because that'll make it simpler for us. We're also going to need to uh, dimension these crossbars here. But the crossbars, okay. The crossbars have to be long enough that you can fit two other links in here, plus the amount of clearance that you need on for your particular 3D printer so that the, the parts don't stick together when you print them. So let's, let's first create a variable or a parameter called uh, clearance. Okay, let's make that one millimeter. And you know, you can probably get a little closer, but I'm gonna make it. Here's where it gets interesting. The let's call them crossbars. Crossbar width. Uh, let's leave it at millimeters. Uh, we're going to have to fit two links in between them, uh, plus the clearance. So let's just say we want two millimeters in addition to the amount of space that it will take for two times wire width. as well as three clearances because you got to have one a clearance uh, between the, the left the center and the right so three times clearance close the parentheses and so that's automatically 15. do the same thing for the crossbar depth That should be enough to dimension the basic sketch. So click OK. 
Now, let's start applying the uh, parameters as dimensions to the different objects in the sketch. Let's start with uh, the wire depth. Click D, select one of the edges, drag it out, click, and instead of letting it, uh, letting it uh, use the default five millimeters, that's the actual size of the object, let's go ahead and say wire depth. And notice that it not only takes the um, five that's been entered, but it also puts the FX symbol here. So that way you know that it's coming from a parameter. Now, let's do the same thing for all the other ones that we need it. Now, let's do the same thing for the width. And finally, let's uh, dimension the crossbars. You might have noticed that these are already changing. Huh. Well, let's go in here and take a quick look at what's happening here. Let's change these to four. And these down to one. They're already changing. That's great. But uh, you, you, you notice that they, they, they don't stick together. The, when, when one of them changes, you can, it, it doesn't necessarily stay in the same relationship. For that, we're going to use something else that uh, has Fusion 360 has. That's called constraints. Let's use the coincidence constraint for this. Over here in the sketch palette, we're going to click coincident. And we're going to zoom in here. And we're going to say, let's make this corner coincident with that corner. And this corner, coincident with this corner. Continue on around. And finally, let's go ahead and move the whole thing here down to the zero, zero origin, just so we always know where it's at. Now you notice the whole thing moved when I picked the corner of one because we'd already defined the relationships between all of the other objects, they acted uh, together as a single object. So when I said move this object down to zero, zero, all the other objects came with it. So now let's stop the sketch, go into our parameters, and change a couple of things. Let's go 10 and see what happens. OK, check that out. The whole thing updated. Well, let's make 250. OK, that's good enough. Yeah, the whole thing stayed together. OK, so that's working. We know that. Let's go back here and just set it back to something reasonable. So the sketch works. We're ready to start extruding into 3D now. But we need to change or add a couple of new parameters. So. Let's create a parameter for the post height. Now, the post height, there's a couple of restrictions on this, so we're going to have to enter a formula. It has to be able to fit the height of the wire plus another height of the wire for the uh, links that uh, are interlocked with it, plus clearance in between those two, plus whatever else height we want. So let's go 2 millimeters plus two times wire height plus clearance. And we're going to have to figure out how high that uh, upper bar needs to be. Uh, so let's say, well, let's call it cross bar uh, raise. Sure. That's cross bar raise. Since we already have the post height, uh, we need it post height minus the wire height. That way it doesn't move all the way up to the top, it just moves up to the uh, so that they match. We'll see how it works in just a second. So click OK, click OK. Now let's extrude uh, under create. 
click extrude or you can just type E. Let's pick uh, this one and this one. And uh, instead of distance, we're going to type in parameter, wire height. That's good. Uh, sketch uh, turns off. Let's turn it back on so we can see it. Uh, let's type E, extrude two more. And again, wire height. That's good. Now I'm doing these separately because uh, it seems to work better when you're moving two of them. Otherwise, it, it sometimes it wants to select the same thing that it selected before uh, when you come back in here and mess with the when you come back in here and mess with the timeline. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and, and uh, click OK. And again, we'll extrude this four corners here for the posts. This one's going to be post height. Now notice something here. Oops. The operation switched to join. We don't want it to join. We wanted to keep it as a new body for the time being. We'll join it here manually here in just a moment. So uh, everything looks good. Let's click OK. Now uh, we can go ahead and turn the sketch off. We're going to need to move these crossbars, and I use these two here. And there's a couple of things here. We need to make sure that we're moving the bodies, and we want to use translate. Not the free move, not the road, nothing like that. We want to use translate because it saves the parameters and values that are used in the move so that if you need to come back and change them and play in the timeline, uh, it just saves it better. So use translate. So Z distance, what do we call that? Crossbar rays. Okay, so you'll see what happened. Instead of this moving from here to here, we've subtracted its own height so it, it matches up here. Let's go in and just change a couple of things just to make sure. Let's change that to eight and the post height. Okay, let's zoom out here. Yeah, that worked. Let's go, let's make that four. And let's change this to eight. Okay, so everything still seems to match. We're good. Let's go into the next step, which is to modify, combine, and now, now that we know everything works and everything's in place, now we're going to join it. So select the target body. So we just over to tool bodies. We need to select the other objects. Join. Click OK. Let's test it one last time. Let's move this back to two. Let's move this back to, whoa. Let's move this back to, let's say four, the post height. Let's make that short. So it still seems to work. We're ready to start turning it into a sheet of chain mail. We have a working chain link now, or a chain mail link now. So the next step is to create some parameters for the patterns. The first parameter that we need to create will be the quantity of links left to right, and the quantity uh, front to back. So let's call it pattern, since that's the operation. Quantity, or QTY, width. And here, we don't want a unit. So we need to select no units. Let's make it, uh, let's just make it two for the time being. Now we need to do the same thing for the depth. We have to tell it how far apart these links need to be. So let's call that pattern uh, offset width. And we do want a millimeter because this is a distance. And again, it's going to be the math. So it's going to be two wire widths plus the crossbar width plus 
clearance. Okay, now we need to do the same thing for depth. And click OK. We want to come in here and under Create Pattern, Rectangular Pattern, Pattern Type, we want Bodies. Select this body. Uh, direction. Uh, let's just use one of that edge right there. Distance type. We want spacing, not extent. We want spacing between objects, not their full extent of the, the pattern. Quantity. We want pattern quantity width. For distance, we want pattern offset or pattern offset width direction we want pattern quantity depth and for distance pattern offset depth click OK let's go up the top here and take a look well that looks like it's pretty uh, well spaced out here Okay, uh, let's go to what's graphic. Let's test it and see. Well, first, let's change four and four. Okay, so took that pretty well. Let's go in here and change the sizes on some of these things. Uh, let's make that eight. And crossbar depth. Let's go ahead and move this up to 20. So it'll be long, skinny ones. Well, that seems to have worked. They're all spaced out, no matter how we change the sizes or the quantities. Okay, we're good. Now we need to take one of these and start making a pattern that interlocks all these because they're all separate they're not locked together like chain mail so let's take a quick look here let's look at it from the top now i want to make sure that i use the original ink because that way i'm always i'm always building from the origin remember that we lock the original link to the origin if we always know which one we're working on which one we're building everything else off of then we can well it, it works better so let's see if this is the x and this is the y coordinate it's this one this one's the original let's make up a few more parameters we're going to have to make a pattern quantity width for the inner portion of the sheet and make another for the depth and remember, these are no units because it's a quantity, not a dimension. And we need a parameter for the pattern move width inner. If that's half the distance of the regular spacing, that way we move that uh, copy of the original link uh, in between the other two links. Now we need to move the original link. We know it's this one. We're going to select bodies, make sure that it's a translate in the x distance. It would be pattern move width. Let's go the wrong way, so let's go that way. And in the y distance, it's going to be minus the depth. And we want to make sure that we copy it. Create copy, not move. OK, so we've got our first ender link. So now we're going to have to make a pattern out of this link so that it forms uh, interconnections with all of these other links. So let's come up here to create pattern, rectangular pattern, uh, I've got body selected, object, let's pick that, direction, this 
its spacing. Quantity will be pattern. Pattern quantity width for the inner. The distance will be pattern move width inner. The other direction will be will be pattern quantity depth inner. And the distance will be pattern move depth inner. Something's not right here. So let's go back over here. We'll figure it out. It's okay. We can figure it out here. Pattern quantity width inner. Pattern quantity width minus one. That's correct. So we've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Did we enter the right thing? I know what we did. Let's go down here to model parameters. Remember how I told you that when you extrude and move, if you use the right selections, you'll save the values? Well, I reused move. What I should have done is pattern offset width and change this to pattern offset depth. Oh, that works much better. So see, we have a lot of freedom in here. Not only did we save the user parameters, but we saved the parameters we used in each step along the way. Let's do a final test here. Let's change some things. Make that two millimeters. Yeah, that seems to work. Let's go 10 by 10. Let's uh, change, let's make them a little bit shorter. That's a pretty long length. That looks kind of skinny. So let's go ahead and change that to 10. Now I'll tell you what, let's make it go the other way. Let's make this 5 and this 10. There you go. You're done. Now you have a pattern that you can come back in and change it will thanks to the parameters. Everything holds together because of constraints. And you have hopefully a better understanding of how these things work together. You can take this and extend it, make it any size you want, any shape you want. You can try it with circular ones. You can try it with more complicated weaves. Most important thing is just have fun. For more information about this project and a complete list of the parameters that are used in it, check out the link to the instructables in the description below. Thanks for visiting.